Week one for Baylor football is the Albany Great Danes. What do you know about Albany? See, for me, it wasn't much, so I thought, why not hear it from the horse's mouth? Head coach Greg Atuso joins Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Baylor, everybody, and happy Friday. I'm Drake Toll alongside Coach Greg Atuso of U Albany. And Coach, I, I'm be transparent here. This is this is a, a place of truth and a safe space where before this offseason, all I knew about Great Danes is the fact that I had two of them growing up. So I have been blessed to have researched you, your program, social media, and the one thing that jumps out to me, your team just has fun. Well, we we try to have fun, shape that, and um, I, I, you know, it's sometimes in this business it gets it, that the kids forget to have fun, and and, and uh, we try to mix it in when we can, and uh, we we have a good chemistry culture of kids that that uh, uh, that like to be around each other, and, and you know, at the end of the day, that, that's something to be in. Um, I would ask you this question: So, yeah, two great Danes. What kind did you have? What were they? Whoa. You have completely blown my mind. Are there okay? There were like it's like granite. It's the only way I can explain it is granite. Gray. So you had gray. You had gray guys. Okay. Well, I have a harlequin and I have a a, a mantle. So the harlequin are the ones with the white patches, like a uh, dalmatian, a giant dalmatian, and then, and uh, uh, that, so not to mention a hundred great things on the football team. So what comes first, the the chicken or the egg, the Great Dane or the Great Danes for you? Did you have these prior to the job, or was this like a, okay, welcome gift? Well, it's funny. My wife, when we were here at the interview, on my second interview, she was with me, and she wanted to get a Great Dane. So she said, you know, if you get this job, you got to get me a Great Dane. So, you know, I surprised my wife. Our oldest Great Dane Blitz, and um, a few years later with Bruno, um, our mantle. It was. Uh, a want, something we wanted to always do and then finally just realized uh, uh, animals like that. Well, Coach, uh, obviously you've, you've had plenty of time over the course of the last decade or so at Albany to, uh, to foster a, a Great Dane uh, culture there, not just the dogs, but also at U Albany. And for you guys coming into this next season, I'll tell you, I look into the schedule for U Albany last year, and the two things that jump out to me the most, that scare me the most, the first is that your team was in effectively every game. I mean, these are a bunch of one-score games. The record itself doesn't paint the full picture of what your team put out there this season. What scares me even more so is the fact that those are usually the best teams the next year. The ones that are battle-tested bring guys back that lost those one-score single-digit games, and it looks like that's exactly what you have coming into this season. Yeah, we we had a tough year. You know, in 2019, we one around of the playoffs, we won five games by seven points or less. I'm sorry, in 2021, we lost five games for ice. That was the flip in our schedule. And we, you know, there's some reasons for it, but at the end of the day, that's my response to make sure we're winning close games. And, you know, and I, I didn't get it done. And we, we need to be better in those games. And our football team, you know, we, we know this is kind of a David versus Goliath type situation. You know, we, we just want to put our best foot forward and play a great football game up to our capabilities and then enjoy the, the sunshine. Hmm. Yeah, you certainly get a lot of sunshine in Waco, Texas. And for us here, we, we many of the, the Baylor Nation, whether it's sports media or fans, have wondered a lot about your program and really the makings of it. So kind of to start, how many guys from last year's team, big contributors, are coming back on this year's roster? Do you feel like you've got a senior-laden group of guys that have experience? We only have five real seniors on our football team right now. Um, we, you know, I know we, you wanted to talk about things last year. We, we did lose a few good players. One of them starting at Florida State at defensive end. We won the battle of the transfer portal. We brought in a group of kids who have played Division II. Division One A levels and, and integrated them into our football team, and I think we're a overall roster, and I think we have more depth at this level of football. Depth is the biggest issue. 
you know, we have 23 less, 22 less scholarships and, and um, a couple injuries can really hurt you. So I think our team, uh, we don't have a bunch of uh, older guys, seniors, but we have third and fourth year guys that are good leaders that are uh, all returning from that football team last year. Coach, as far as offensive scheme goes, I don't want you to give any way any secrets here, but where is it that this team makes its bed? And even over the course of your, your almost 10 years at, uh, at Albany, has there been a consistent tweak based on the athletes that you have, or are you a, here's the offense, let's run it, whoever we got? Well, I think every coach knows you got you to adapt your ta- uh, offense and defense to your talent level. We have been following the same script for a long time. We've had... A lot of success with our style of football. If any guy grew up in Pittsburgh, you know, we believe you got to play, run the football and, and play great defense. We weren't very good on special teams last year. And in games like this, it can be a big issue. And we've really got to, to keep ourselves afloat in the special teams against a team that has more depth and size and speed issue for us. But at the end of the day, you know, we, we got away from who we were last year. And I think we're bringing our team. Look, we know they have the number one rushing defense in in the country coming back probably, and and uh, players returning. We know the size that they have, but if we can't establish some type of running game, then, then you, you know we we have to find a way to run the football and and to be effective and keep our defense off the football. Coach, you mentioned the defensive side of the ball for Baylor. For you guys coming into this year, I know there are different defenses and styles across the nation. Some teams like to play fast. Some teams like to play big. What is the MO defensively for the Great Danes? It's very difficult to recruit size at the FCS level. and We're more of a speed to move around with our front and do some things like that. Um, I'm a D-line coach by trade and and, and, I, and we just, you know, we're going to try to to, to be as athletic as we can. We, we understand we're not going to be, so we're going to have to to rely on some other weapons in our, our, our repertoire, but uh, um, nice, but quick athletic defensive linemen. Coach. And linebackers. Teams are great. Some teams are actually are, are more expensive. Sum up of this great Danes team. What comes to mind first in what you want to see this season? You know, I just want to see us put our best foot forward in games. I think last year, um, if it could go wrong, it would go wrong, and 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 that's that that's something that's contagious. And we we pride ourselves on trying to be disciplined, and we try to pride ourselves on playing really hard. Um, we're struggling in those areas, and all of us, um, we got behind the eight ball early. This call with played North Dakota State, and then. Rhode Island, who was ranked, and then Syracuse, where he was number eight at the time. And we just kind of got in a bad place. And, and like I said before, that's a head coach. And it just took us too, too long to turn the corner. So, you know, I want to see us start fast. I want to see it. And if, if, if we're playing hard and we're, we're playing, playing smart, I'm pretty happy with this football team. And we're going to win some games. Oh, hold the phone there. I got to tell you about betonline.net. If you want all things sports, wagering this fall betonline.net is your place game one Baylor and Albany there will be a line for it and you can go online a line online you can go online and put your uh, monetary goods on Baylor to win and cover the spread or Albany to cover the spread or even Albany to win and make a lot of money if they do so Greg Gattuso who's one of the show today is is certainly intent on Albany putting up a fight and now I'm bought into that so if you want to make that Go to betonline.net as your place. All things sports wagering, and, and they've got the NBA when that comes back, and the NFL when that comes back, and MLB right now, and UC, UFC. That's the fighting stuff. I'm not really into that, but if you are, betonline.net has it. Super easy to use interface with podcasts and stuff involved, too. So go to betonline.net today. BetOnline is where the game starts. BetOnline.net. To jump into the game in Waco coming up in now just two weeks with your team coming here. I know originally on the schedule for Baylor, it was Louisiana Tech. And after that game was dropped, it was kind of a scramble to find somebody for that week one slot. How did that process go? Did it go through you to decide, hey, look, there's an opening here. We can make this happen. Let's go to Waco. Well, you know, these are great games for our kids to play. And and, and I do enjoy them. And I've been on both sides of them. You know, I coach. Pitt and challenges are presented. You know, it certainly wasn't my first 
pick, obviously. We, um, I think my talk, but, you know, it's, it's for an experience and, and to, to – we don't have many people on this football coached and played against a top 10 team, and, and I think that's going to be a great experience for a lot of them. Um, they, you know, to get down, we're going to come down early. We're going to see the place. We're going to practice. We're going to do the commit to what we're dealing with in that stadium. But at the end of the day, it's about going out and playing football against a football team. That's a, that's a big deal for, for, for us, and we, we know the challenges, but um, this football team would like to compete, and we're going to go out out there and play as hard as we can play. I, I feel good about our team. I, we're we're uh, we're struggling in right now, as probably most teams. But uh, it's going to be a good experience uh, going to Waco and playing. Coach, how much of this decision to come to Waco was based on the show Fixer Upper and Chip and Joanna Gaines? Do those names ring any bells? Well, well when when the, the first time I talked to them, they asked me the you know, all important question. What was Baylor offering to get us a simple? I wanted to meet Chip and Joanna. I think, um, you know, we're going to have some, some wives there. We're big fans of them, the type of people they are. And so, you know, it, it's, it's not, it's not that uh, I feel, feel like they should come over and meet us and give us a, a handshake or something. Probably so, and I know they, they'll be at every Baylor football game probably the regular season, so I'm sure you'll get a glimpse or at least get to, to meet them. Uh, and, and furthermore, you've talked about the luster of being able to play, send these guys uh, to, to a place like Waco and McLean Stadium, and the fact that you, again, were on the Pitt side or the Maryland side of these games as well. And for, for these teams and your squad, I know you have played games against bigger opponents. You beat Lance Leipold at Buffalo here a few years back. So if you have any secrets for that later on, we would love to know on the show. Uh, but looking at the game this season and the matchup in Waco, when you see Baylor, you mentioned that defense. What is it that sticks out to you that makes Baylor a top 10 team in the country? Well, one, you know, I, the first thing is the defensive line. I think, you know, I, I, I'm a played nose guard in college. College. I'm, a, I'm a defensive one. Got a heck of a defensive front. Really big and physical. I, the nose guard is looks. I can only imagine what he looks, looks like in person. Um, but they're very, very, very good up front, and they they've got a lot of speed. The kind of style of defense that we try to play is to be is be athletic up front, be great to the ball, and they do a, a really good, good job of it. They're they're very talented on both, both sides of the. Is usually the the biggest problem is you know the speed is you know we played Syracuse last year the in middle part of the second quarter and just just kind of gave had him 30 23 you know the running back was special and he made he made a really good play so that that's the problem is, is size is really the biggest difficulty in my opinion Hmm. On the quarterback side for Baylor, you got Blake Shaven trotting out for the first time as a starter this season. He got to start a couple games last year, but it's a lot different. When you're named the starter in the offseason, you carry that with you for a few months going into this. Do you feel like game one for a new quarterback, that's an area where you, Albany, can expose Baylor? Uh, um, quarterbacks, when you know we're, we're going to have a, a new starting quarterback as well, and, and I think that that's all go. You know, and I think that he's he's a talented person. He's the big thing he has is he'll be real rattled about gaming experience. Um, but at the end of the day, hey, you know, you got to do something. And I think that if he if he can have have his way with us, it'll be difficult. So we've got to do some things to to try find, find a way to, to to get some pressure on him and get it with our front, with our pressures, the different things. Quarterbacks dictate a lot for a football team. That this age of football is really driven by that he's a really really good one coach i don't know if you know this you do baylor was kansas and vanderbilt before it was cool to be kansas and vanderbilt in football they were just bad for a, a good portion of the early 2000s and you know most fans are really in, in the last decade getting used to being good at football so with a team in the top 10 playing a night game game one you know you're going to get a packed house in waco with a lot of rabid baptists that are you know have drank a lot of Dr. Pepper and other assorted non-alcoholic beverages, but you'll get a rowdy crowd. Is that something you try to prepare your players for? You've talked to them about. What do you expect out of this atmosphere? Oh, we love it. I, I think that's the, the 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 real 
Joe's thing about as much you know, as uh, I think the really the thing I love is the atmosphere of it. You know, we, you know, when you go in and, and I, you know, I want to see how our kids respond. I can't wait to see how our young quarterbacks handle that. The, and, and that's where you find out who you are is in, in the heat of battle. And, and regardless of we're going to know who we are a lot more when we're on that charter flying home than we do going in right right now. And I'm looking, I want to see who's going to stand up and play and, and, and not afraid of fight. And, and I think we have a, that atmosphere is, I, I grew up with that type of atmosphere in college. I think it's, um, and I think our kids are going to really enjoy it. Yeah, coach, I gotta be honest with you. I've done enough research to know that you're a Penn State guy. And I, I if you've set your expectation at a Penn State whiteout when you get to Waco, you will still be sorely disappointed because I'm not sure there's a better atmosphere in college football. But we'll try to put on as much as we can the pageantry uh, when you guys get here. And really to to end the conversation of the game in Waco, when it comes to to building confidence with your team to win this game, what does Albany, you Albany, have to do to give themselves a shot? I know you've mentioned a few things already, but what is it that that is going to put this team in a position to pull off the upset? Well, your only, ch- your only chance, you know, in any type of game where you, you contain the big plays and both, if you can do that and get these games, I'm going to tell you, I always do the second half. If, you, if you're plus or minus, and you can put some heat on them in the second half. The pressure switch to power team, you know, and, you know, I, I've been in them. I, you know, at Maryland, uh, Towson, we beat Towson. We played William and Mary. We 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 won seven and six. I mean, I've been in some of those games that have been tough. It's it, it happens, you know. And I think at the end end of the day, you got to go out there and play. You know, we're not we're not going to do anything for anybody else but ourselves, and and uh, we're going to play our style, and we're going to do the fourth quarter. That's your shot, you know, and and. Um, it, it's it, it's how you win big games, and I think um, I, I think that's we we just need to. Went to the University University of Pittsburgh a few years back. We actually played a really good game after the kids were standing around looking around. We get a, a kickoff return for a touchdown, opening kickoff, and throw a pick that gets returned back to our 15 yard line. We're on our heels. You know, I'm sure they're going to come out with big plays and with their running game and, and how they play. They're, they're, a, they're a really within, uh, within their structure really well. And um, they're a very well-coached football team. So plays and, and, and fight our butts off and, and, um, and try to get into the second half with them. I know I, I said it's where I was going to end with the Baylor and you Albany talk, but I lied. Dave Aranda. When you when you think Dave Aranda, when you see his stuff, what do you see, especially as a defensive minded guy yourself? What do you see out of Coach? Yeah, I don't really, I don't, I don't really know Coach Aranda very well. I, I have some friends that know him and him as a person, and, and obviously as a coach. I mean, his just you know his defense, they're they're very dis- you know, and I think um, he lets his guys play. You know, they're not the fanciest team I've ever. Seen. They're a good, good football team. You know, it's it's what we strive to be. When when you've got to be fancy, um, that's just not the way to beat win championships. You know, and I think he he's obviously I think he's a hell of a coach from what I've seen and uh, what I've heard. And uh, you know, I've seen I haven't seen anything differently. Hmm. Rounding things out, the the NIL, the transfer portal, everything. It's realignment, flipping college football on its head, and. I'll tell you, it's it's personal to me. I grew up going to University of Central Arkansas Bear games. So we'd go and we'd watch, you know, on the stripes every Saturday night. And FCS football has always had a special place for me because it's got this, this luster to it that I think a lot of football fans overlook. They don't realize how much pageantry is in that level of football. And the last thing that I want to see is transfer portal. And I turn the FCS almost into a farm system for guys to transfer up and go to division one division one fbl how do fcs teams keep that from being the case moving forward and try to bring their own prowess into the new era of call you know drake i don't know you know i've always been a person that whatever's thrown at me i would learned to adjust to stuff i just don't want to sit around i know there's a lot of coaches screaming and yelling about transfer portals it just doesn't benefit 
me or my team or this group of people like that I love. It doesn't benefit if I'm worried about that stuff. I, I we operate within the rules that, that are set. Like I said, we we lost a kid named Jared first. He's starting for Florida State right now. We he we were his only option. He's a great kid, great human being. He's I'm happy for him. Um, but that who has two years years or three years left out of your life. But instead of sitting around sulking, we went out and somebody that we think is going to actually be a pretty good replacement for him. And uh, I have a lot of faith in that type of quality. So, you know, we we decided to make the, the transfer portal a um, plus minus like hockey with it. We just wanted to come out on the plus side. And I think we did. We lost three kids first for us probably going forward, but we were able to replace a lot of kids with with some divisions up into our league. That are gonna, I think all three or four of them are starting or are, are rotating, and we were able to get some other transfers that have fit into our program really, really well. So that's that's how I sit around and worry about that stuff. I don't have any 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 out money, any IL money to mess around. Hmm. On on that, I I'm telling you, the NIL thing has been. You saw it with the the quarterback at LSU who had five or six NIL deals. He leaves the program, and the guy gets to keep all the money. So there are obviously holes in this in this system that have to be patched at some point. I think that's objective. It can't continue the way that it's going, and college football st- still have some semblance of what it did even five years ago. For you guys. Is there at U Albany a a plan to institute NIL? Do you feel as though your job has just taken a whole new responsibility on along with it, or is that for you an, an afterthought? And it's just winning football games and building this team at primary one. Yeah, yeah, money. We don't have donors that are going to you know pony up a bunch of money for kids, but there's kids that are doing their own. Things. People are doing a great job managing with the kids. I stay out of it. Um, it's not my thing most stay out of it unfortunately that's not the case either and and that's i think the danger of the transfer portal with nil is that you that the opportunity for people to go beyond the rules it's sad and people are doing it you know and i know it's going on i mean i know it's going on i've, been, I've experienced it. again and i i just i'm not going to get caught up in the things i grew up in a mentality of i'm going to control it. i'm going to continue to recruit kids that you know I've always prided myself on recruiting kids that are hidden gems and up and, and we, we have a bunch of guys like that you know we're we're not in a recruiting mode where we can you know, we've got to find those hidden gems and we've done a great job with that here with, with my coaching staff and, and um, if they get opportunities to, to go up then we'll just uh, we'll, we'll adjust from that but it's it in hindsight if you look at it you know we came out of a pandemic we had extra years of eligible transfers and oh yeah yeah, we're going to drop nil on top of that i'm not sure we ever it was somebody would have liked but at the end of the day everybody got issues with it you know Mm -hmm. and and there's always at some point you know and and i think that can happen and um you saw it happen with the year ended up at usc so i i just i'm just going to operate with my team and don't worry me i'm just going to do the best i can in the structure that they hand me to use coach in closing there is a in covering sports the last few years one of the things that i have come to love is when non-conference opponents come to a school and leave as as heroes such as utsa jeff trailer came down there for in his first season a couple years back and it felt like all the baylor fans were just excited to see the effort the toughness the grit that that team put on the field and obviously it turned out a couple years later to work out really well for those guys as good as they've been for for your team is is there any part of this that uh, that you want Baylor fans to take away after they watch the Albany Great Danes on the football field? You Albany come September third. Well, you know, I think you've kind of hit it right on the nose. You know, I literally just talked to them about, you know, this isn't the we want to walk, walk out of there, play our best football, play physically, we have some respect from our opponent. I think, you know, I, I don't. We're not going to come in in there and we're not trying to we're not going to try to prove we're tough we're going to come in there and play football the right way and i we're uh our discipline here i i i think you know we 
I'm not going to put up. It's not about that. It's about, about playing the game as well as you can play it. And we're not trying to prove anything to Baylor in their football game as we can. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm excited to see how a bunch of our kids match up as a coach. That's the the most important thing for me is is how how do we respond to adversity for a team that wants to be a championship is can you get off the floor and and get back in the fight i'm looking for you know we're, we're going to keep fighting i'll give you a great example of the type of team we have it was last you know it got out of control and in the we had a bad, bad run late second quarter and then the third they decided that they were going to keep running the ball and trying to score late in the game and they broke a run with 25 seconds left and, and um kids clear gone and, and and our back, our safety uh, ran it down and tackled it at the ten yard line. You know, no, there's no give up, and there's going to be fighting these dogs, and that's that's what I look for when we walk off the field. Well, coach, we're certainly all excited to have you in Waco and your football team. Like I said, everything that I've seen from a social media standpoint has been uh, just. It looks like your team has a lot of fun playing the game of football, and at first, I. I didn't know Albany, and now that you, Albany, has has been put in the limelight, I've loved everything that I've seen from Twitter to Instagram to speaking with you. And so I want to thank you for joining the show today. Thank everybody out there for listening to Locked on Baylor, making it your first listen every single day. And folks, I invite you back on Monday. We'll break it down game by game on the football schedule. So BYU is coming up. The Bears and the Cougars will break all that down on Monday. Don't miss it on Locked on